Now, suppose you are this little stick man in the in this slide, and you draw you draw a ball and make a trajectory of parabolic. So when you draw when you throw a ball, there are at least two forces acting on it. So first, first one is the uh, the push of your hand. Let's say you make an uh, this force. And let's say it has uh, it is a vector of f. So this vector f represents the push of your hand. Then another force that um, acting on this ball is the downward pull of the gravity. This is represented by this vector W, or the weight of the ball. So experiment shows that when two forces act at the same time, at the same point on a body, the effect of the body's motion is the same as if a single force as if a single force were acting equal to the vector sum of the or original forces. So let's represent this single force as the resultant or vector R or the resultant vector. So more generally, any number of forces applied at a point of a, on a body have the same effect as a single force equal to the vector sum of the forces. So this principle is what we call superposition of forces. We will often need to find the vector sum or the resultant of all the forces acting on a body. We call this the net force. So net force, as represented by vector R, is equal to the sum, the vector sum of all the forces acting on that body. Let's say F1 plus vector F2 plus vector F3 plus and so on. Or simply the decimation of all forces acting on that body. So that is the superposition, the, the principle of superposition of forces, or simply we call the net force. Now, let's have an example. So for our example, we have three professional wrestlers are fighting over a champion's belt. So figure shows in the next slide will show the horizontal force each wrestler applies to the belt, as shown from above. The forces have magnitude F1 of 250 Newton, F2 equal to 50 Newton, and F3 120 Newton. Find the X and Y components of the net force on the belt and find its magnitude and direction. So this is our illustration 
of the three forces of the wrestlers. So we have F1 here and F2 and F3. And by the way, this is the, um, what do we call this? Her, uh, uh, view, top view of our illustration or, or, or the forces acting on the champion belt. So, what we're gonna do now to solve this one? So, we are looking for X and Y component, the net force, and also the magnitude and direction. So, just like what we do in vector addition, we will use the component method to find the X component and Y component of the resultant vector or the resultant force on this one. So using the component method, here are the um, here are the x and y component of each forces. For F one, we have negative one hundred fifty newton. For the y component of F one, we have two hundred newton. For the x component of F two, we have fifty newton and zero newton for the y component of F two. For x component of F3, we have 0 newton, and y component is 120 newton. So to verify this um, component, just check our illustration. So we can see here that F2 is horizontal, therefore there's no comp y component. Same with F3, which is vertical, so therefore it has 0 x component. So next, to solve for the x component and y component of the resultant vector, we're just going to sum or add it up all the x component and y component. So we have the x component of the resultant vector as negative 100 newton. And for the y component, the resultant y component, we have 80 newton. So we're just going to add all the x and y component. Then using Pythagorean, we can solve now for the magnitude of the resultant vector. So square root of x component squared plus y component squared, we have 128 newton. And finally, to solve for the direction, we're going to get, uh, we're gonna get the, the angle theta. So using the arc tangent, y component over x component, we have here okay so this is our illustration so we have now the theta of 141 degrees so meaning all the forces acting on the champion belt f1 f2 and f3 can be represented by a single force which is the summation of each forces represented by the vector or the resultant vector R. So all of this concept will lead us to the first Newton's law of motion. So first Newton, uh, the, the Newton's first law of motion states that an object continues in a state of rest or in a state of motion at a constant velocity, constant speed in a constant direction, unless compelled to change that state by a net force. So the tendency of a body to keep moving once it is set in motion results from a property called inertia. The tendency of a body at rest to remain at rest is also due to inertia. So it's important to note that the net force is what matters in Newton's first law. For example, a physics book at rest on horizontal tabletop has two forces acting on it. First, the upward supporting force coming from the table or the normal reaction of the table or exerted by the table. And the second force is the weight of the book. 
exerted by the book to the table due to the gravity. So when a body is either at rest or moving with constant velocity in a straight line with constant speed, we say that the body is in equilibrium. So for a body to be in equilibrium, it must be acted by zero net force. Therefore, the summation of all the forces acting on that body is equal to zero. Or simply, the x component and y component of that resultant vector or the summation of that is equal to zero. Then we can say that that body is in equilibrium state. Now, let's check your understanding. So, in a classic uh, 1950 science fiction film, Rocket Ship XM, a spaceship is moving in the vacuum of outer space, far from any star or planet. So, when its engine dies, as a result, the spaceship slows down, it slows down, sorry. Or, Again, as a result, the spaceship slows down and stops. What does Newton's first law say about this scene? So state your answer and explanation in the comment section of this video.